Yo, where's the plan? Devon X Scott back and welcome to 2019. Wish you guys all the best. I uh, hope you just make this year. You to just achieve everything you set out to do. Uh, for the last few months, two or three months or so, I've actually been a little bit inconsistent on this channel. That was due to my schedule and stuff. Although I was posting vlogs, so if you're not up to date with the vlogs, I'll leave them up here. I think it's the side of sticking with my gut. It's this side. Click there, check out the vlog channel. But what better way to kick off my hopes of consistency again on this channel than reviewing or just looking back revisiting my first smartphone ever, the Sony Ericsson Xperia Neo. Yeah, all the way back when Sony used to be Sony Ericsson. Also, fun fact, the first time I tried to do YouTube was a review of this phone, the Xperia Neo, but it didn't work out because I thought my voice was just way too cringe and I scrapped the entire idea. But, I mean, I know my voice still cringe. I guess I just live in it now. <laughs> I can actually imagine where I would be if I actually started YouTube back then, though. <sighs> so anyway, this phone was released in February of 2011, which makes it like a whopping eight years old, if my math correct. Almost eight years old, which... Ridiculous and back then to me this phone was revolutionary. I remember this, when I actually went to buy it the day I went to buy it My dad had an iPhone 3G and I thought that was like the best thing ever touch screen and all this thing my jigs and apps And I mean I had no idea what the Xperia Neo was I had a Sony Ericsson W995 at the time and I just wanted to upgrade in the same brand because people tend to do that I had no idea what Android was or anything. I just buy the Xperia Neo and when I turn on the display that 3.7 inch that large 3.7 inch display and I see the quality, I was just mesmerized. I was like, holy sh**, it have phones there other than the iPhone that actually good. <laughs> and we all know iPhones never used to really have the highest resolution displays. They still don't really have the highest resolution displays. But this was actually a relatively high resolution display at 3.7 inches back then in 2011. And I was just blown away by the quality. And when I actually used the slider for the first time to unlock the phone, I was just mind blown. I was absolutely mind blown. Design wise, back then phones used to have so many variant shapes, sizes and designs and I actually loved the way this felt in my hand due to the curved edges and rounded corners. And to be honest, it actually still very comfortable to hold in the hand. Also, a 3.5mm headphone jack was also a norm back then. <sighs> Rest in peace. Software navigation wasn't much of a thing and the hardware navigation buttons at the bottom chin always intrigued me for some reason because of the way it was backlit. At the top of the phone had the micro USB charging port and an HDMI port. You should have seen me showing off with this HDMI port all over the place. And flipping it around to the back, we have the ancient functionality of removing the back cover and battery to reveal the SIM and SD card slot. Although 3.7 inches sound relatively small right now, <laughs> it was actually a relatively large display back then and it had a dedicated camera button. So taking photos of the 8 megapixel camera was a dream just looking at through that quote-unquote giant 3.7 inch viewfinder and to be honest the photos now actually don't look that horrible which kind of cool android 2.3.4 gingerbread for some reason that was bleeding edge in my mind i mean it was the latest and greatest from android i liked that software so much the, 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 i had so much fun with that phone honestly so much custom roms custom kernels overclock it so much the last state i leave the phone in was running miui coming on to the end right before upgrade the device started to show its age a little bit so I decided to flash MIUI and it was just amazing. It made things so much more snappy, so much faster, so much more just intuitive. And I was so happy. In fact, the only reason I ended up upgrading from the Xperia Neo is because a store here in Trinidad had a sale on the Galaxy S3, brand new for almost half the price. So I just had to dig into all my savings and just grab that 1.4 gigahertz quad core goodness after using this 800 megahertz single core. Not so goodness for the past six months, six to eight months. But pretty much, yeah, if it wasn't for that, uh, I, had no, I have no idea what I would actually be using right now. But yeah, good times, good times. Shockingly enough, if I try to use the phone right now, it's actually not all that bad. It's pretty usable. But for somebody like me, who just kind of need the latest and greatest, it kind of get frustrating at a point, but I'm pretty sure it have a lot of people out there who would be able to use this exact phone right now and have zero issues. So yeah, this is the phone that introduced me to Android, introduced me to smartphones and it's kind of indirectly the reason you're watching this video right now. So yeah, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.